The 10 presenters that we brought together tonight are presenting about little thoughts that turned into great passions that ultimately turned into their life's work. So let's give a round of applause for Harvard's 10 Big Thinkers. <laughs> Our planet is on the brink of an ecological disaster, and you are sitting calmly in Sanders Theater. Find out why from Professor Gilbert. If global warming were caused by gay sex or caused by the practice of eating puppies, Americans would right now be massing in the street calling for its end. The CEB gave a student-wide poll to all undergraduates, and we got this huge Excel sheet of all the poll results of a bunch of list of names of professors and descriptions by students themselves of why they wanted them. We weeded through it to try to get diversity of, of field, to get some scientists, some humanities, some politics, uh, and uh, whittled it down, invited a bunch of people. Every single professor we invited said yes. The only ones who couldn't come were because they had prior commitments. If woman is the definitional antithesis of man, then so too is boy. The boy is man's other other. He too is the conceptual opposite of man. Manhood defines itself against boyhood as much as it defines itself against femininity. Sanders has a capacity of 1,100, but I think it is pushed, has been pushed to 1,500 tonight. Uh, we're all very excited and very proud, and we hope this is a good sign for the future of Harvard Thinks Big and hope Harvard Thinks Big can become an annual tradition because of that. But computer science is all about solving problems, solving them efficiently, solving them effectively, solving them cleverly so that you actually get the answer you want, right? So somewhere in this phone book is a Mike Smith. How do I, the human, find him? Well, I could, like an idiot, start at the front of the book and start leafing through, and I get to the A's, and I get to the B's, and a 750 pages later, I finally reach the S's, and there is Mike. But I can actually do what you all have already been doing for your lives, probably probably instinctively, if you even still use a phone book, and you just jump randomly to like the middle. And what's powerful about this is because this device is actually sorted for us in advance. We know the A's are to the left, we know the Z's are to the right, so I can literally realize, oh, I'm on M, I literally can split this problem in two, and now what was a thousand page problem, thank you very much, I practiced in advance, what was actually <laughs> a thousand page problem is now just 500. And now, the professor of psychology, best-selling author of The Stuff of Thought, and a man on leave this spring, yet when we invited him to come, proudly wrote, and I quote from the email, I can't refuse. The man himself, Mr. Stephen Pinker. Which kind of societies are men more likely to be killed in warfare? Hunting and gathering peoples, living in the rainforest, or in the United States and Europe in the 20th century. Um, I've actually never had any of these professors, so I guess that was one of the draws for me. I also kind of just looked at the list and saw it was a lot of big names, and especially I saw the YouTube video promoting it, where they were talking about what they would be talking about, and that was really, really interesting, and I was like, oh, I gotta go. And this is a lactose tolerant population, and this big, this is basically a number of people up this axis, Right across this enormous region of DNA, you've got sameness. That is a beautiful, exquisite footprint of natural selection. To view history this way, to see the engine of social change in the protests of people rather than the privileges of the powerful, is to insist upon a different way of living in the world. It requires that we not only think big, but act big too.